Hello? Okay. Ah, I'm Adam Smasher. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for waiting for all this fun stuff. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is slaying the corporate litigation dragon, which is how to kick ass in a corporate lawsuit when you're told to shut down a website and you'd rather not. And there's probably a lot of stories about people who wind up in my position and wind up, for whatever reasons, being forced into folding. And they always, they always seem to get, get a full room. They always seem to have a packed house. And for some reason, nobody wants to hear somebody who won. I'm uh, used to talking to half-empty rooms. Um, anyway, how many people here have heard of CSX Transportation? Show of hands. Okay, right out the, yeah, right out the window. Uh, you can hear it. Um, how many people, he has anyone here ever worked for or currently works for? Okay. Um, CSX, um, I was, a, it was an employee of theirs and actually left the company to do computer work. And, of course, I've got to look over my shoulder while doing this. And just want to start off, if I have a connection... Okay, this is how not to do a presentation with a borrowed laptop on a, on a non-existent network. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, somebody's idea to rely on a wireless network. Um, okay. Anyway, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. That's my disclaimer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I'm going to tell you the story of what happened to me and how I wound up kicking ass. And basically the goal was to... The goal was to wind up with a dot dash sucks site. Now, of course, CSX being a Fortune 500 company, they tend to not like it when you put, add a dash sucks after their name, a dash sucks dot com after their name. And needless to say, they, they didn't like it. Now, interesting what happened was I knew that whatever domain name I came up with, they were going to come after me and get pissed off. So what I wanted to do was legitimately, and with them smiling on it, register csxsucks.com. And one of the ways that I did that was by kind of playing their hand for them and setting them up by registering csxdiversity.com. And one of the things that they have, which is actually two of their locomotives, which are kind of the pride of the fleet, they're the newest, biggest, best, whatever locomotives, they have this big thing on the side, and it's, you know, CSX diversity, and it's all this corporate crap with, you know, like all this you know, people of all these different Crayola colors holding hands and, you know, as if they're a diverse company trying to portray this. And the whole thing's one of these corporate programs that's just a total joke. So, being that it's a total joke, I helped them make a joke out of it and registered csxdiversity.com, knowing that they would complain about it and knowing that when they complained about it, my response would be, well, okay, maybe... If I register, if I'm using csxdiversity.com, maybe I'll go along with your theory that it caused confusion. But to avoid confusion, and because I'm a nice guy, how about if I register csxsucks.com? Would that be okay with you? And then we can avoid this confusion because really that's what they're complaining about is the confusion. Not that, you know, of course, they don't want to impede my free speech. Um... So what I got after re shortly after registering csxdiversity.com was this cease and desist letter, which is available at the Chilling Effects database, which is an EFF project. And basically what it says in here is, you know, you're running this website. It's going to cause confusion. We don't like it. And, you know, we demand that you shut it down. We demand that you cease operations immediately. We demand that you transfer ownership of the domains to us. 
And, of course, we demand to hear from you by this certain time on this certain day. And my response was, go fuck yourself. I said, you know, this I'm not interested in playing by what your demands are. I said, I have every right to operate this domain. If you want to work out a deal, let's work out a deal. And basically they said, well, if you don't do what we say you have to do, we're going to sue you. And I said, okay, go ahead, sue me. And they said, okay, we will. And they did. And they filed a suit against me in federal court, um, which alleged trademark infringement against them. And basically what I wound up doing is I looked over how they wrote up the complaint against me. And it was kind of ridiculous. And what wound up happening was they offered me an out. They said, you know, we've, we've charged you in federal court, and if you goes to court, you're going to lose, and blah, blah, blah. And, of course, the thing is nobody knows who's going to win or lose once it goes to court. You know, it depends on the judge. It depends on the court. It depends on all these variable factors where, in reality, it's a crap shot. And, of course, the probability goes to whoever has the case in their favor. And looking over the way that they wrote the complaint against me and looking over the facts that I knew of, I realized that they'd painted themselves into a corner by complaining about things that were free speech issues on a complaint that's supposedly a trademark infringement case, which any judge would look at and say, this has nothing to do with trademark infringement. So when I realized that... And I looked over the, what they had originally offered me to say, you know, if you sign and agree to this, we'll drop the, drop the case against you. And I kind of looked over it and I said, I've got to be out of my head to sign off on this. This is ridiculous. I said, you're not offering me any protection from future harassment through legal channels. You're not giving me any green light to go ahead and do what I'm doing. Basically what you're doing is you're demanding all these things that I do. You're demanding that still, you know, I transfer the domains to you. I stop using these domains. I go ahead and use the other domain. But then as soon as I sign off on it, there's nothing in this agreement that stops you from charging me again tomorrow. I said, this is ridiculous. I'd never signed this in a million years. But re being that they have kind of forced themselves into this situation of court, really the only two ways out of it for them or to go to court where they'd likely be laughed at, or to renegotiate a contract on my terms. So what I did over the course of a year was renegotiate the contract on terms that were acceptable to me. <coughs> and hopefully we'll get to look at the contracts. This is publicly available. The website is currently up and running at csx-sucks.com. Uh, yeah, right now it's available at uh, csxsucks.com slash pn8. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just go over some of, the, some of the bullet points on the agreement that I guess you can't read from where you're at. Um... Okay. Now, in the, let's see, in the original agreement, they said, and of course, I don't have a screen in front of me, so I'm going to have to turn around and read this. Um, the original agreement that they had proposed, um, paragraph 2C, it says, Smasher does not hereby reserve any rights to use the CSX diversity domain name for any purpose whatsoever. Okay. That kind of concerned me because what I was thinking was, I've already got somewhat of an audience coming to csxdiversity.com, and if I completely throw it out, and I'm not allowed to use it at all, then what? Then how could people find it once I start switching everything to CSX sucks? So what I managed to get added to the final draft of the agreement, which is what we signed off on, it says added in, except that these domain names may be used next to the hit counter on the csxsucks.com website to state this includes hits to the site's previous location, csxdiversity.com. 
the reason that was important to me is so by having that text appear on the home page, you can now Google for csxdiversity.com and who comes up. Okay? Something that they didn't think too far ahead about. Um, paragraph 2F of the original agreement that they had proposed, there was, um, and of course I don't have the agreements in front of me. Um, okay. Basically, what they were saying was that I have to do all this stuff, and they're not really going to do anything for me. So, of course, you know, part of a contract means that I do something for you, you do something for me. Otherwise, what's the point um, if we're not both getting something out of this deal? So what I had added in to the final draft of the agreement, it says, CSX agrees not to take or cause any action that would impair or interfere with Smasher's ownership, registration, or maintenance of the CSXSucks.com or publication of the website content. And that might seem like something that would be important to have in an original draft, but it wasn't there. So I managed to get that added in, and that was very important to make sure that they don't sue me the day after I sign off on the contract, that they don't sue me for, you know, running CSXSucks.com. Okay, paragraph four regarding my use of their trademarks. Originally, what they proposed was Smasher shall not use any of CSX's trademarks, trade names, or s and service marks. And, of course, Fortune 500 company, they own a good handful of trademarks. And what I managed to add to that, so it, what it read in the final version of the contract, was... Smasher shall not use any of CSX's trademarks, trade names, or s and service marks, except the following CSX trademarks, which may be used. CSX, CSXT, CSX Technology, CSX Transportation, and CSX Corporation. Did I miss any? <laughs> that, that's the bulk of them. That's, that's the ones that I'm interested in. So they said, uh, by the final version of the agreement, they said, go ahead, you can use those. So you can't use any except for the ones that we're explicitly listing here, which are all the ones that I'd want to use anyway. Uh, paragraph 5 of the original agreement said, The CSX logo shall be altered in design and appearance to be substantially similar to the logo annexed here to in Exhibit D. Now, which seems reasonable, but artistically it's just very limiting to say that what I'm using as a logo on the home page has to be significantly similar to anything. That means that any artistic change I make, they could challenge by saying, well, it's not artistically, it's not significantly similar to what we have attached as Exhibit D. So what I managed to get that change to is Smasher will display a CSX Sucks logo on the CSXSucks.com website that does not infringe on CSX's trademark, such as a logo annexed here to an Exhibit D. So we've changed it from meaning that I have to use something that's significantly similar to this particular logo to something that's not their logo. And also, the wording of this, it says, Smasher will display a CSX Sucks logo on the home page. I'm contractually obligated to display a CSX Sucks logo on my home page, which I think is kind of interesting. <coughs> um... This is one of the things that kind of made the site, made their case against me kind of weak in terms of whether or not it was really a trademark case they were concerned about or whether it was really a free speech case they were concerned about. Chapter 6, because I've got some pictures on the site, um, Ku Klux Klan guys and um, kind of some references to CSX management. So they didn't like that too much. So it says that, um, let's see, the original draft of the contract, the agreement, says the photographs of the chain gang and the Ku Klux Klan shall be eliminated from the website. Smasher shall not use such photographs or similar images on the CSXSucks.com website, nor in any other way with direct or indirect reference to CSX. And, of course, I didn't want my free speech impeded upon in any way, shape, or form. 
So, in the final version of the agreement, that paragraph was gone. Paragraph 10 is very interesting to this whole ca to this whole game that I played. Paragraph 10, the original draft says CSX will pay to Smasher, fill in the blank, the cost associated with the acquisition and transfer of the csxdiversity.com domain name. And what we added to that in the final draft was, well, actually, what I wanted to add in there and what I was realizing as we got closer to signing off on it was they were making some promises to me that were not in any way, shape, or form could I hold their feet to the fire if they fell short on. And I needed something to use as leverage to say, if you don't fulfill your obligation under this contract, I need to benefit out of it in some way. Because obviously, if I don't fu fulfill my obligations under the contract, we all know they're going to hammer me over it. So what we added to paragraph 10 was, in the event that CSX fails to pay any fees owed to Smasher under this paragraph within 30 days of the transfer, paragraph 13 of this agreement will be void. Paragraph 13 was the only paragraph in the entire contract that they were not budging on. And we'll get to that. But everything else, I got e exactly what I wanted. In paragraph 13, they didn't want to be flexible at all about. So this was my way of saying, you have 30 days to pay me, or else we throw paragraph 13 out, null and void. Paragraph 11, uh, let's see, CSX releases and discharges Smasher for use of the domain name csxdiversity.com. Um, doesn't say anything about releasing and discharging me from anything about csxsucks.com, which, since that's the site that I will be operating from that point forward, I'd like to be released of any liability for it. So, of course, we added that in. Paragraph 13. This is amazing. Okay. There's actually nothing amazing about paragraph 13, particularly. Um, None of the parties hereto shall directly or indirectly inform or issue any oral or written statement to the press or on a website concerning the conduct of the parties with respect to the matters mentioned in this agreement, this agreement, or any terms of this agreement without the prior written approval of all parties hereto. And what that is, essentially, is that's a shut the hell up clause. That's a non-disclosure clause, meaning that we're all signing off on it, but none of us are at liberty to acknowledge to anyone that we've signed off on it, we're not even at liberty to acknowledge that there is an agreement. We're not at liberty to confirm or deny any aspect of the agreement, let alone the agreement's existence. And of course, since my job as the webmaster of CSXSucks.com is to make them look stupid, my job is to make, is to make sure that the agreement is publicly known. And the way to do that is to get this paragraph voided. And of course, that was written in up uh, a few paragraphs up, um, paragraph 10. And we'll get to this a little bit later on. Let me just go through the rest of this. Actually, that's, um, that's the bulk of the contract. And that pretty much highlights the differences between what they had originally asked for when they said, here, sign this and we'll get off your back, and what they signed, what we all signed off on actually a year later, which was kind of me saying, you sign here and I'll get off your back. Um, okay, so we signed off on the agreement. I switched over the website, waited for my check to come, never came. Waited 30 days, check didn't show up. Waited 60 days, check didn't show up. Waited 90 days, check still wasn't there. I wrote a letter to CSX corporate offices, actually to their law department, to the person who was in charge of this, and I said, Dear Cindy, in regards to our agreement concerning CSXSucks.com website, 
CSX has failed to comply with its obligations under paragraph 8 and 9, CSX letter and payment of fees. I find that CSX's failure to comply with CSX's obligations under paragraph 9 relieves me of any obligation that I may have otherwise been held to under paragraph 13. Since it appears that I am under no obligation to refrain from publicly releasing the agreement, I will be posting it in both its original and final drafts on my website and also make it available to chillingeffects.org. Um, so basically what I'm doing here is I'm telling her that she screwed up and I'm going to go ahead and exercise my rights now that paragraph 13 is void and I'm not under any obligation whatsoever to go ahead and post it, post the agreement. Um, and then I give her, the op give her time to respond. If you believe that I am not correct in my understanding of the, gr the agreement or if you wish to renegotiate the terms, Please feel free to contact me. I'll be publishing it no later than this date, not before this date, to give you time to respond. And it's interesting, it's actually fascinating, the call that I got back um, within a few days of sending out the letter. My phone rang. I picked it up. And she, she says, the check's on the way, but it's your fault that we didn't send the check because you forgot to remind us to send the check. And that was fa for the, for the head of a law department of a Fortune 500 company to come up with. It's your fault for not having reminded us. As I I I said, you know, you know, I was thinking to myself, well, if I didn't abide by any of my obligations, would you remind me or would you sue me? So. Needless to say, I got, a couple days later, I did get the check. And shortly after getting the check and having no further correspondence, I was re felt relieved of my obligation to keep my mouth shut. And of course, the original agreements are both about the original and the final draft of the agreement are both available in full on the website, along with the side-by-side -side comparison between the original and final drafts. Yeah, I got the money a few a few days after I called up and reminded her. Um, what I got out of it was for two domain names that I transferred to them that I wasn't using, they gave me $100 per each of the two domain names for registration and transfer costs, which more than I paid, I was happy. Um, they came up with the number. Uh, yes, they did let them lapse last I checked. Um, it, they... Actually, they they took control of the two domain names days before day within days days before days after I forget but within days of expiration renewed them for one year and last I checked they were publicly available that's csxdiversity.com yeah. <laughs> Did everybody hear that? So so this is their own website they forgot to renew. <laughs> um yeah, but it, but it, but of course they fi of course they fired the guy who renewed it for ten years. So, who's going to know to renew it when it's up? <laughs> uh, trains were held up for about two or three days. Uh, yep. Yeah, this is not a company that's... This is a good example of how not to handle computer security. 
Um, I mean... And, of course, um, even if they did go ahead and register, preventatively register and, and just sit on CSXSucks.com, I mean, there's still, there's CSXReallySucks.com, there's, um, there's CSXEatsPoo.com, there's, there's, you know, there's how many different variations can you think of, and can you register all of them? And the answer is no, but one of them that you might want to get before someone else does is CSXSucks.com. At least make it a challenge for somebody doing what I do. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a Fortune 500 company that doesn't want to spend money to register a domain name versus me, 90 cents short of a dollar, and I can't even keep track of how many domain names I have. Um, just in case anyone thinks that CSX. Um, isn't too big a company, and maybe they're, you know, maybe this is something that, you know, just some little thing I pulled. Um, just want to highlight some of CSX's connections. Um, CSX sold their shipping lines. Uh, did anybody here heard of the Carlisle Group? Okay. Um, for anyone who hasn't heard of them, these guys kind of make Halliburton look like the Girl Scouts. And what they did was... For about $300 million, CSX sold off its shipping lines to Carlisle Group. And about a year later, Carlisle Group turned around and they sold the same shipping lines one year later for $650 million. For about $350 million profit. A little over 100% profit in the course of a year which is generally considered not too bad for an investment. And about the time that that happened, the former C president and CEO of the company, John Snow, got a little promotion. And there, how many places can you get promoted when you're the president and CEO of a Fortune 500 company? He was named Secretary of the Treasury of the United States by good old W. So... This is a company with a lot of big connections. This is somebody that if they wanted to put a bullet behind my ear, they could. And they didn't. They were playing by the, ru they were playing by the rules, however poorly, but they were playing by the rules. And if I could do this with a company that's this well connected, anyone in here can do it. Um, actually, not only did he leave the company with a 68, he left a fail, the company did miserable while he was managing it. Uh, he left with about $68 million worth of golden parachute. He had a lot of personal loans forgiven by the company. And one of the conditions of being appointed treasury of the secretary was that he was supposed to basically un um, relieve himself of certain types of investments, of which his stock in the company was one which he still owns. Which he still has it. He also has uh, unlimited free trips on the company jet whenever he wants. So this is a this is a company that's well connected, run by a guy who's well connected, and I'm still up and I'm up and running. Yep, they got it. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, 
That, yeah, uh, the uh, the whole thing about railroads being, you know, infrastructure to the nation, they're eligible for certain money, you know, to protect the infrastructure under Homeland Security. And of course, as soon as John Snow came into the White, moved into the White House, they started getting quite a bit more money. Yeah, um, which makes the, the entire company a lot more liquid as an asset to whoever wants to sell it. Um, let's see, I've got a f just a couple of minutes left if anyone has any questions about the site or my legal wranglings and getting it up and running and keeping it up and running. Any questions? Why did I choose CSX as the company to go after? I chose CSX as one of the companies to go after and the company that I went after most, ag most aggressively. There's one other Fortune 500 company that I've got a dash sucks.com site ag um, on that I haven't heard, I was surprised, somewhat surprised that I never heard any complaints about. But uh, with CSX, I was formerly an employee and I got to see firsthand how they treat their employees similar to, to uh, the way a baby treats diapers. And what I did here is the site is mostly set up, the bulk of the site is actually a blog where employees can post the, con the conditions that they work under and how the company treats them. And I think this is kind of important information that should be publicly available, which wasn't. Um, it was definitely something that wasn't available when I was working there. We just bitched and moaned to each other. And this kind of gives people... A, a place to vent, a place to talk about the problems, and also the stockholders get to see it. Yeah, CSX, over, over the last few years, they've been doing a lot of layoffs. So there's a lot of ex-CSXers around. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how, uh, how long did it take me and how much did it cost over the year or so that I spent working out the contract? Um, let's see. It took a, uh, about a year, I think it was a little over a year from the time that I got the cease and desist letter to the time that we signed off on the contract and implemented everything, except for my check for 200 bucks. And during that time, as soon as I got this, actually, as, yeah, as soon as I got the cease and desist letter, I called up EFF, which if anyone in here is in any problem with any website, anything on the web, your first phone call needs to be to EFF and you t have to take a copy of your cease and desist letter and make sure a copy goes to chillingeffects.org. Um, CSX hooked me up with a company, with a, with a law firm that uh, provided pro bono representation for me. So I had to pay for uh, total some costs. Um, and these guys were, this is like, I think at the t I'm not sure about now, but at the time I think they were Yahoo's primary law firm. And... I think their uh, their billing rate was somewhere around 350 an hour, um, and of course they spent a lot of time and work on this. My total out of cost, po my total out of pocket cost, was in the ballpark of 400 dollars, of which half of it was returned when I got the check. Um, the total legal bill for this, had I been not represented with the help of EFF, would have been well into five, if not six digits. So yeah, definitely EFF is a worthy cause for No, well, actually the, what happened was EFF found a firm that took it on pro bono. So EFF didn't handle it themselves, but the fir the firm did. Actually, one of the lawyers from that firm just recently joined EFF as legal counsel to EFF as as one of their staff attorneys. So I got to say hi to him next time I'm in San Francisco.
Right. Uh, anyone else before I hand it over to the next speakers? All right. Thanks for coming out.